and welcome to Restaurants Hawaii on the Think Tech platform. My name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. Today, you're going to have a treat. We're going to be featuring the Waihata and Company, which is one of Hawaii's most charitable companies in the state as they continue their legacy by pledging $200,000 a year over the next five years, a million dollars to Hawaii Restaurant Association and the food service industry. Learn today how this generous donation of a million dollars will benefit our Hawaii food service industry. Aloha and welcome to Restaurants of Hawaii on the Think Tech platform. Today, I have two guests and I'd like to have them introduce themselves, please. Chris, welcome. Aloha, Cheryl, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Chris Lee. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for Waihata and Company Limited. Thank you, Chris. And Andy, could you please introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, I, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Andy Huang. I'm the VP and Chief Operating Officer for l and uh, Hawaiian Barbecue. Hi. Thank you so much, gentlemen. And today we're discussing um, why Hata, Russell Hata's pledge to the Hawaii Restaurant Association and to the industry, the food service industry in Hawaii. So Chris, share with us, to our viewers, a little bit about why Hata. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a privilege and honor for me to be able to represent our 450 uh, people uh, of Waihata, or Ohata Ohana, as we call them. Um, you know, this year we made 110 years uh, doing business in Hawaii. Uh, we're the largest locally owned independent food service distributor in the state um, and one of the largest in the country. Um, so we are very fortunate to be able to uh, be a big part of our food service community, um, our local restaurants, to our schools, to our military, being able to provide them with all of the goods that they need um, on a daily basis. So, um, you know, it's just such a pleasure that um, we've had the good fortune uh, to be able to uh, make this contribution and on behalf of Russell and his family. And um, he has been such a generous person um, and one that really genuinely cares about the community um, and our people of this state. So um, just a, a privilege to be able to share a little bit about our organization. Thank you, Chris. And you are so right. You know, gosh, how do I say this? It was Waihata's 110 year anniversary, huge, just huge. And typically, you know, at an anniversary or a birthday, you know, you receive gifts, not Russell Hata and the Waihata Ohana. Instead, they gift to the food service industry this pledge. And it was huge. And I don't know what other word to say that it's just an amazing, amazing gift at the time of your celebration to again, give back to the community. And if anyone knows, right, Russell has been in this industry for a long time, the family, 110 years. So Chris, what type of um, challenges are the food service operators still challenged with today? Well, Andy's probably uh, the best person to ask that question, but you know, we, um, we work with our operators, our customers every single day. And so we're first time we're in their operations, um, you know, understanding, you know, not just the labor challenges, uh, but also the rising cost of goods, right? Inflation. Um, and on top of that, you compound that with the rising cost of utilities, increased rent in Hawaii. You know, it's just, it, it, it's the perfect storm for, for a disaster for, for a lot of our operators. And so really our role is to understand those challenges and really help them control what, what we can, you know, mainly their food costs, um, identifying the right product for them to use, understanding their biggest challenges, um, and really, um, you know, just trying to leverage all of our resources um, to be able to support and give them the best chance for success. Um, so that's really what we pride ourselves on. All of our teams are committed from our warehouse guys to to our salespeople, you know, all of our marketing people as well, you know, looking for the right products to promote and share those resources and knowledge to our customers. And you're so true. It's so true. You're right. If anyone knows what our um, operators, our restaurant operators are faced with, it's going to be Andy. So Andy, what are you hearing and what are you experiencing through the LNL franchises? 
Um, yeah, definitely. You know, the restaurant industry is always uh, uh, evolving. Um, we, you know, just when you think uh, your business is getting better, now you're, you know, you're rising food costs and um, labor shortage. You know, it's really hard to find good quality employees and in the industry. You know, a lot of people wanted to work for like big tech company, right? You know, it sounds so good, but, you know, we also need a lot of uh, new generation to support our industry and uh, Hawaii, like restaurant industry in Hawaii is one of the biggest uh, industry employs so many tens of thousands of, of people, right? So we wanted to educate the, uh, the uh, you know, like the, the state, the, all, all the people about how to support our restaurant industry, you know, the food costs. And it's very, it was really fortunate that we have uh, a company like Waihata to support our small mom and pop stores. You're so right, Andy. You know, gentlemen, if anyone knows the impact that happens to our economy, to our community, when our restaurant closes their doors, is Russell. And when we met, you know, we talked about the pandemic and how he observed, you know, we had a few restaurants that has decided to close our, their doors, not only through the pandemic, but even after, you know, and what the impact of each restaurant when they do close their doors, how the community and the state loses, right? They, now it's not only the distributors, because through this endowment fund, it's going to be helping the whole food service industry. And even though there they could be, you know, maybe out there looking at who can I support, who can I um, bring on board to our vendor list? Russell mentioned, right, it impacts a growth, it impacts a farmer when a restaurant closes their doors. It impacts a fishery because now they're not ordering fish. Um, the distributors, whether it's the paper goods or anything else, it impacts so many different businesses when a restaurant permanently closes their door. And that's one of the wishes, you know, of Russell and the Endowment Fund is how we can keep these restaurants open and strong and growing. And that's that's what the fund is all about. So, Chris, you know, one of the things that you've you've talked about is maybe bringing on some subject matter experts. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, I mean, the restaurants are, are not just providing food and cooking, right? I mean, they're business owners. They have uh, accounting and bookkeeping that they need to do. Uh, they need to be marketers at the same time. Um, you know, when you're building a restaurant, you need to have planners and designers. There's so many things that go into starting a restaurant business. And, and once you open your doors, uh, you know, those needs continue. And so, you know, we recognize the need for that and we recognize the cost for that. And, and we're just hoping that a little bit of these funds can help offset that, you know, just to give the restaurant uh, a bigger, a greater chance for success, right? Um, when people are, are working, you know, with the labor shortages, right? There's very little time for payroll and to balance your book. So if we can help just a tiny bit with that, you know, again, you know, the restaurants have a better chance for success. Exactly. And Andy, you know firsthand how many different um, partners in a restaurant, right? Whether it's your bank, whether it's your commercial lease, um, rent um, realtor, whether it's your accountant, whether it's a tax. So, you know, there's all these different businesses that restaurants really um, rely on. Can you discuss a little bit about what kind of other business partners restaurants need to have on their side in order to be strong and viable yeah so you know the support um the, the support fund this endowment fund will help the restaurant to access like such a matter experts who can provide guidance various topics for example like the legal employee relations uh the relations training commercial real estate advisory tax uh, strategies you know also a possible resource for future employees who have been trained in culinary arts. You know, uh, we need more education to the public on how important the restaurant industry is uh, to our state and, you know, the work ethic that the younger generation can learn from working in the industry. 
uh, flexibility work uh, schedule while going to the college. So all these uh, education, uh, marketing is going to be very useful and helpful for the small, especially small mom and pop store. Because when the, uh, the small mom and pop sto uh, stores, they don't have a lot of time to um, go research and go study, watch the news. And, you know, they, all they do is working at the restaurant. They wanted to, you know, provide the best food to their um, to their customers. That's all they want to do. So you know, for us to come in to help them, um, it, that's going to be tremendous help for the small mom and pop mom and pop stores. And it's so true, Chris. Many of the restaurateurs they tell me, you know, they're so busy in the kitchen or maybe placing inventory orders or working with their staff or even you know during the employee the worker shortage. I see, you know, owners of restaurants or general managers actually bussing tables and washing dishes and serving food just to keep those customers happy. So, you know, part of this endowment fund, you know, we're gonna we're hoping that we can really implement programs that are gonna help those restaurateurs that are so busy in their restaurants that they don't really have time to get the knowledge or to reach out to big business partners to help them, you know make sure that their businesses are financially strong and succeeding. So Chris, do you have any um, thoughts or any, I guess, um, recommendations to restaurateurs for watching this as to how this endowment fund will help them in the future? Yeah, you know, it, it, Andy hit, the, hit it right on the head. You know, it's um, really about the education, right? Allowing our restaurateurs to you know, not only address the operational challenges today and, and hopefully uh, with time and, and some of the programs that HRA is working on um, on the educational level, those will, will cure itself, um, but really allowing restaurateurs also to continue their own personal education um, to gain further experiences in culinary, the culinary field or in business. Um, and I think that's really important, you know, that, um, you know, they're always working to keep their knives sharp, so to speak, and, and um, you know, just even for their staff, right? Just allowing those opportunities for their staff to uh, gain those experiences, um, you know, that I've been fortunate to have to, you know, expand my career elsewhere um, around the world, right? So, um, you know, I, I'm really excited about what this, uh, the possibilities are with this endowment fund. Um, and and I, Russell doesn't want to stop after five years. You know, our commitment is as long as we can continue to do it, that he wants to continue to contribute to it. Um, and our Ohana is 100% behind that. Our Hot Ohana is 100% behind that. So uh, we look forward to trying to make that happen. That is so amazing. And you're so right, Chris. You know, the um, state economic advisor, they mentioned that every time a dollar is spent in a restaurant, when somebody orders a meal, that dollar is impacted into our state economy, a dollar eighty-eight, because now restaurants can pay their rent can pay their employees and maybe you know hire on more staff, can now pay that farmer for their produce or that fishery or that distributor. And that impact and pay taxes, right? And that supports the whole economy. You know, the food service um, industry is so important to our economy. So Andy, you know, as you're growing more and more LNLs out there, you know, you tell us what you feel is the forecast for the future as more LNLs come on board to the family? Um, yeah, so, you know, we're really fortunate, you know, to grow to this this level, uh, to going to expand it to the mainland too. You know, we're, we're, we're continuing to support local uh, here at home, but also expanding, you know, our Hawaii Aloha to over the whole country and over the world. Um, yeah, so, you know, both Chris and I, we, we started in the restaurant industry and started as a busboy. We actually worked together way back, you know, 20 plus years ago. Uh, and then, and, and, and we, we've seen the, the, the industry evolve and how much challenges even back then uh, we're facing until now we're still facing. And back then we never had this endowment. I wish we had this endowment back then, right? You know, so, um, and, and really, if a restaurant closed down, it, it affects a wide range of, uh, you know, suppliers, um, you know, employees needs to find another job. Customer no longer have a place to 
dying, they have to find alternatives, right? And and less options, all these chain reactions, right? So we really don't want to see uh, our, our one of our favorite restaurants to to close down. And and like L and L, we evolve from a small mom and pop to a, you know a big organization. But each individual operator are still operating like mom and pop style. So. When you know, as uh, working in the corporate office, we see the challenges, and and we're really um, glad to see uh, White Hata stepping up to help us uh, to grow our industry in 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 Hawaii. Well, thank you. Now, I didn't know the two of you actually knew each other. I mean, you worked together. Is that what it was? Yes, we did. That was a long time ago, Andy. Yes. Twenty-five years. I was thinking about it this morning. Oh yeah, twenty five years, man. Yeah, bus boy, server, we did everything. I didn't know that. Oh, that's so it's so serendipity, right? That the two of you are on the show talking about this wonderful gift that Waihata is providing the food service industry. And you're right. You know, I also have been in the food service industry for many, many years, and the Hawaii food scene has definitely changed. And we just talked about some of the changes. If anything, you know, during the pandemic, it taught us is that, you know, restaurants do need also, you know, online ordering apps or software that helps them streamline their inventory process so they can quickly process the next inventory order, right? So some of those ways that um, maybe Waihata, do you want to talk about it, Chris? Some of the ways that Waihata is helping the restaurants, especially in their inventory ordering systems, which is, you know, now quicker, it has to be quicker because long gone are the days that I used to take inventory with a notepad and a pencil. Yeah, you know, it, it's um, it's all about efficiency, right? You know, the more efficient that we can be as an organization, the better um, services that we can provide our customers. And at the same time, the more efficient we can help our customers, the more time they can focus on their customers. So, you know, we've, we've made a, a big effort to look at new technology. Uh, we're upgrading our systems to be able to accept orders uh, via uh, web-based apps. Um, you know, we're looking at um, shelf to sheet inventory guides, order guides that customers can take from their, um, you know, uh, what, what used to be paper and pencil, right? You know, right to their smartphones. Um, so those are all plans that uh, we actually have in motion and, and are looking forward to introducing that to our customers. Uh, but we have to continuously involve, you know, Russell um, has the foresight to know that that we have to be at the forefront of that if we want to continue on to the next hundred years. Um, so really grateful to have, um, you know, his commitment to that. And, and again, hoping that will help our restaurants so become more efficient on their end um, and ultimately continue to contribute to our economy. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's not just about the technology, but it's about the products that we're able to source as well. Um, you know, we are searching globally for the right products um, for our customers. Again, understanding what their needs are and making sure we're providing the right product at the right cost to them. Um, so we have teams dedicated to that. And, you know, that's what keeps us uh, keeps us growing. So uh, really exciting to be a part of, uh, of, of this organization at this time. That's so great. And I know that you're sourcing all kinds of different, uh, really um, unique types of foods, too, to provide to our our um, visitors and our locals and our community, because each restaurant, you know, if anything I saw recently is the emerging of all different types of restaurants that I've never seen before. And um, especially on the menus, as you know, guys, my husband is vegan, so more vegan offerings. I'm seeing a lot of that. And I do see also a lot more um, local produce at the, I go to the chef zone. So a lot more um, local produce over at the Chef Zone, too. Chris, you want to talk about a little bit of that, the local farmers? Yeah, you know, it, we, we do um, bring in a lot of product. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, it's part of um, the challenge that we face, uh, you know, being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean um, as a distributor servicing the schools and military, as well as our independent uh, locally owned restaurants. Um, it is important. Uh, but at the same time, we also recognize the importance of working with our local producers, right? Not just the, the farmers, but other local businesses, producers of seeds, beef, poultry, eggs, et cetera, right? We, we are working and continuing to support them um, by bringing in products for them to support our restaurants, because that is an important part as well for a restaurant, right? Making sure that they're continuing to support local as well. 
Um, so, you know, it's not just Waihasa, but it's, it's very um, encouraging to see a lot of other distributors as well from our produce people to our other broadline distributors also supporting the, the um, idea of sustainability and, and supporting local. Um, you know, it takes a village. And if we want to get there, it's not going to be predicated on just one person doing it. This is where our competitiveness, you know, kind of falls to the wayside and, and we focus on doing what's good for Hawaii and Hawaii's people and economy. So um, really, you know, again, an encouraging time to be a part of the industry um, and just, you know, I'm, I'm really excited and seeing what Andy's guys are doing too, right, to support local in their LNL restaurants. I mean, that's huge, right? Exactly. Andy, you want to touch touch on a little bit of that? Because I've seen that too over at the LNLs and then also you know, talking about vegan, you have that um, vegan musubi. Yeah, so, you know, I think the growing, um, uh, you know, consciousness about the environment and, and so more and more people wanted to have options, um, vegetarian or vegan options. So we brought in this um, a plant-based musubi. So it's it's it tastes and looks just like a uh, spam musubi, but um, it's vegan. So I mean, give uh, people extra options, right? Um, the, the the restaurant world is evolving, like you say. You know, we need to accommodate accommodate different type of uh, eaters, yeah, foodies. Um, and then also, you know, uh, just want to touch base on the, you know, this endowment fund fund will really help mom and pop uh, shops so that you know give them extra resources and help them um, the assist them for uh, the day-to-day -day operation other than that um you know the rising food costs and also the to help them to understand to maybe educate them on the importance of the technology right so now all we are hearing everywhere every day it's ai ai like what is ai right well what does the ai to do with my uh my barbecue uh chicken or you know a, a chicken katsu right so the the mom and pop uh, operator, they're just focusing on cooking, but the, you know, don't don't forget about evolving with the with the society, with evolving with the technology. So uh, we are here to help them, you know, to educate and, and be one of uh, a support. Um, you know, they can reach out to uh, as a Hawaii Restaurant Association grow to thousands of members. This is what we're here to uh, offer them to uh, give them advice for. Exactly, because the Hawaii Restaurant Association is here to support the whole food service industry. And you're right, Andy, you know, everybody is talking about how they can utilize technology, as Chris mentioned, you know, to streamline, to make everything more efficient, especially when it comes to operations in a business. In general, you know, restaurants, it's just bottom line, it's a business and it needs to be profitable in, in order to keep their doors open. So, Chris, is there anything else that I missed that you really wanted to mention about this endowment fund? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, the big thing is that food is a big part of who we are in Hawaii. It's a big part of our culture. You know, it, it represents all the uh, diverse people that are part of our state. And um, one of the things that the endowment fund is also intended to do is, is you know, uh, support culture, cultural preservation through culinary arts, right? And it shouldn't be a financial reason why uh, a chef or a, a restaurant owner or their team members couldn't broaden their, their comfort level and experiment and try new things, whether it be going out to a local farm for the day or taking a trip to a ranch on the Big Island, you know, and we really want this um, endowment fund to support that idea that food is a big representation of who we are as a people of Hawaii. So, um, you know, it's not just about the the uh, challenges, but also about the opportunities for the future. And, and that's another thing that I think is, is very exciting um, for this fund to support. You're so right. We just we're just talking about that, how food, our food is our culture. Our food represent all the different cultures in the state. And how uh, everybody, it's a melting pot, right? And it's and when you come to Hawaii and Andy, you talk about, you know, L and L and the 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 um spam musubi. Well, it's not spam, right? It's a it's a plant-based uh, musubi. People come here and they said, What are you talking about? And I said, just think of it as a breakfast sushi. And they eat have one bite and they just love it. And they don't know that it's plant-based, Andy. They just think it's you know, a piece of spam. 
but everybody represents all the different restaurants represent all their different cultures. And that's what makes Hawaii and our food service industry so special. You're so right, Chris. So Andy, is there anything you want to discuss before we wrap up the show? What did I miss? Well, you, you pretty much got everything. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, Hawaii is, is a melting pot. We have so many different cultures. It's one of the most diverse, uh, you know, city and state in the whole world. And we are just like our food, uh, l and food is we have chicken katsu that's like Japanese uh, influence. And we have the barbecue chicken where the short is like Korean, Chinese, Portuguese. Uh, it's everything different. That's that's what makes Hawaii cuisine. Like Hawaii cuisine, that's how how we you know differentiate, uh, define our our cuisine. So, uh, just just glad to that we have this uh, endowment that we can share, we can support, and HK. I think uh, the biggest part is the education uh, of the, the 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 general public. So, that's that's what we we need to continue to do for. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you so much for being with me today. So in closing, again, we just want to give a shout out and a thank you, a, just a sincere thank you to Russell Hata and the Hata Ohana for being Hawaii's one of Hawaii's most charitable companies and continuing their legacy by pledging this million dollars, $200,000 over the next five years and hoping to go on um, this is really going to impact the food service industry and keep the industry strong. When I spoke to Russell, he said, you know, this is all that he wants to do is how do we support our local restaurants and businesses? And that's what this endowment fund will do. Again, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the executive director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is the voice of Hawaii's restaurants and food service industry. Thank you so much for joining me today. We'll see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, Please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.